Hey, everybody, welcome back. Uh, there's a couple things we need to do. It's uh, almost 6.30, getting an update on our thought cabinet here. We've got advanced race theory in 41 minutes, which then hopefully gets us help with the body, access to that back, like, union area, and all of the above. Um, the other thing we're gonna do is talk to this guy, check out this scene a little bit, and then we're gonna talk to Kuno's, uh, friend, I suppose. I have a hunch that maybe she's involved with the gun, but I, I, I don't know if that's gonna make a lot of sense based on, I, like, I don't think they can afford it and they seem pretty young. <laughs> Who knows? A couple of indicator lights are missing from this control panel. Loose wires dangle from the now vacant holes. In the middle is a lever. Beneath it, a small metal plaque. Yeah, this panel looks... Usually closes the water lock, turning it into a bridge that lets you cross the canal, but there's a crash Samaritan butter sign in the way. Pulling the lever probably won't do anything. Oh, yeah, I mean, we could try it. You pull the lever against... Uh, you pull the lever all the way up until the metal clicks against the contact pins, and you hear a soft clunk. And then, nothing happens. I'm probably just gonna break this thing. Close the water lock on Wednesday. A springs... A spring brings the lever back to its original position. You still need to close the water lock to get across the canal some other way. Okay, so this is like access to another area, I guess. Wasn't there a sign over there saying functionality will be restored on Wednesday morning? Yes, okay, so we're gonna wait till Wednesday. We're still Monday, so uh, we have some time. Man on the water lock. Uh, good day to you officers. A burly man hangs out by the water lock, carving up a generous serving of salami <laughs> with an old hunter's knife. His eyes are fixed on a man stranded on the other side of the water lock and on an enormous billboard that has fallen down in the canal between them. Hey, uh, do you happen to know what caused this wreckage? I wasn't here to witness it, but these look like tire tracks on that sign. Weird, huh? Then again, plenty of daredevil drivers in Revachal. The words daredevil driver sound ominous to you. Too bad it also takes a year and a day to repair anything around here, especially a water lock. The rest of the coast is closed off till then. Well, what's further down the coast then? Well, there's the fishing village, an abandoned fish market, a bizarro church. Not much use to the congregation, though. There always seems to be something wrong with it. Okay, so a bunch of weird stuff. Thanks for a moment. Yeah, not really much else. Just bombed out ruins. Hmm. How about, uh, can I have some of that there uh, salami? I'm pretty hungry. <laughs> yeah, sure thing. Cuts off a slice of salami. You want some too, officer? He turns to the lieutenant. Lieutenant ponders the offer for a moment, then decides to go for it. Why not? He takes a slice of salami from the man and chews on it. All right, well, I, we know what the lever does. It's going to raise the thing. All right, bye. Okay, cool. Simple enough. So now we need to close the water lock on Wednesday. Tomorrow, we only have two timed events right now. Butter sign down. Yes. Okay, let's run over to Kuno's friend. Let's see what's up. Keep an eye for any bottles along the way. Do we happen to know if this bag has stuff in it? Yeah, it contains one bottle. All right, cool. This seems to be the only way that we're making any money right now, and it's not a super reliable way of doing it. I don't know if we've talked to her. We haven't gone in the bookstore yet either. We'll see how this goes. It goes as I'm expecting, probably not so well. Can't believe you didn't take the shots, fucking cowards. <laughs> Wave your gun around like a clown. Just calls Next us out. Next time you point that shit at me, you better take the shot. Oh, maybe I will. Oh, that's it. Okay. So, do we have access to get back here? Like, I'm wondering if we just click back there, if this will kind of guide us. Hmm. We have this section over here as well to check out. Uh, hold on. What's this? This is behind bars, so... Is open. Young girl with chubby red cheeks waves at you, smiling. Her nose is also red from the cold. Oh, hi there. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? <laughs> Do I look like a reader? 
Uh, I don't know. Not right now, but is it okay if I maybe ask you a few questions? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. They're probably not. Uh, what's your name exactly, young lady? Uh, my name is Annette, sir. My mom, her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside, minding the register or organizing the stock. The girl gazes at the window, then suddenly jolts, her eyes wide, as if recalling something. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. And uh, you're standing out here in the cold, because why? I'm signaling that the store is open, she nods eagerly. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Hmm. Yeah, such a good little trooper you are, already learning the value of hard work. Oh, thank you, sir. I'm happy to help Bomb out with the store. She smiles and stands upright with a little, like a little soldier. Shouldn't you be in, like, uh, school or something? I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help Mom keep this place running. Yeah, you're, you're lucky. School's stupid anyway. You're lucky not to be there. And Mom says it's necessary to do both because it builds character. Mom says a proper worker is dutiful. And that's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. And how's the business going, then? Now, Mom says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talks about a house. this house being... She looks over her shoulder. Cursed. What? Behind her, the window has been boarded up. Okay. You sense the boards creaking, twisting for a second, and some kind of doubt in her tense shoulders. Huh. Cursed. Uh, what do you mean exactly? Well, cursed in a way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. They all go. She's looking for the right word. Uh, ass. You mean ass up. She blushes. I wouldn't really say it like that, but I guess so. Wow, this sounds rather serious. Maybe we should look into this. We can go into the bookstore and ask about the case, but I don't see much more to look into here. The lieutenant makes a note in his notebook. Yes, she chirps. Please do. Also look at our wares inside. The postcards and board games are there, sir. Oh, what do you know about the other failed businesses before you? Oh, nothing really, sir. Mom doesn't allow me to sneak around in the back rooms or the cellar. <laughs> Want to go in there, obviously. Uh, I don't really know what's there. Hmm, how does this curse uh, manifest itself? It does not manifest itself in any way. It does not exist. I liked it better when we were talking about whether it's appropriate to stand out in the freezing weather. Yeah, but Kim, the, the plasmic uh, manifestations. No such thing. The lieutenant stands at your side, stern and serious. Uh, the girl looks back and forth between two. Anything else you wanted to talk about, sir? I don't know. That's enough about the curse for now. And that looks at your shaved, prickly chin. Distinctly contrasts with the oily mutton shops that surround it. Uh, maybe I could tell you about some of our books instead. Well, I don't know. Who are these uh, famous people? Oh, kings and queens and generals of old or artists and writers or musicians. Those kind of people. They're unusually, or they're usually something extraordinary about them. She scratches her cold red and cheek and continues, I think that's why people read them, to find the secrets of their fame. It seems like most people who read these books fail to get more famous from reading them. <laughs> Thank you, Logic. Right, uh, so reading these doesn't make the readers more famous, does it? Well, but it does make the famous people more famous, she says gleefully. Well... These famous people sound like a bunch of dorks. Anna's expression remains ever so hopeful, but she doesn't say anything. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, I, I, I'm not gonna, let's not tear the child apart. Uh, never mind, I, I, I literally had nothing else to say. Okay, she looks at you with wide eyes. Okay, bye. I'll see you around, Annette. I guess, you know what, let's ask her about the crime. What is, what is this crime business? Oh, crime fiction's about murders or burglaries or things like that. And the work of policemen or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch the criminals. Hmm, why would anyone want to read about crime? Oh, it's exciting to people, I guess. They get to imagine dangerous things, and it's kind of like a puzzle. Where you can guess who the criminal is or how the good guys are going to catch him. Well, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm a, I'm a policeman myself, by the way. Well, you don't look like much of a policeman. She examines you as if to find something policeman-like. Well, what, do you, what does a cop look like, then? 
Oh, I didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. She points to a book cover on which you see a strapping Vespertine officer. He stands grimly over the body of a dead woman. <laughs> you know, uh, nobody actually looks like the guy in the picture. That's just a stupid fantasy of a man. She looks at Dick Mullen, frowning. He isn't even drawn right. Yeah, he isn't even drawn right. This isn't how human shoulders work. The perspective's all wrong. She examines the picture, trying to find whatever's wrong with it. Then she shrugs and puts the book aside, unconvinced. That's just no way to cop. I can do it way better than Dick Mullen. Oh, sure you can, sir. She smiles mischievously. He's just a... He's just a fictional character. He'll be no match for you. Maybe you can show me some real police work, sir? The cover image of Dick Mullen seems to stare at you with his harsh approval. Like in the books. All right, well... I'm gonna deduce something, then. Come on, now. Frick, you failed to deduce anything substantial. Thanks, Composure. She waits intently. Uh, well, I, uh... Uh, 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 I'm a detective, and I deduce that, well, you are a girl. Oh, come on. Anyone would notice that. She rolls her eyes. <laughs> uh, oh, we might as well ask her about the romance. It's a type of book where there's a rich lady, and she has to choose between the good man and the bad man. She laughs, or she smiles at the thought, perhaps imagining herself in that situation. Or there could be a story about a poor lady getting a rich man. It's about a man and lady business, sir. Hmm. Oh, what about a book where the man and lady business doesn't work out at all? Oh, I haven't read many of those. Maybe you should ask my mom. Yeah? You think she has one about, like, an excruciatingly painful breakup? I don't think it's a romance story. If the main characters break up, though, she pauses trying to figure out the appropriate answer. No, no, think about it. Like, one where they plunge into a torrid spiral of pain and recrimination, only it's really long and drawn out, scarred for life, like a phantom limb. Um, no, I I don't know. She looks at you with puzzlement. Doesn't ring a bell? All right, I'll, I'll ask your mom. It's probably just me. Ah, uh, yes, she knows books, definitely. What was that? An idea for an unfinished novel somewhere stuck in your forebrain? <laughs> All right, fine. Well, that, that's enough romance for me. I, I had other questions. We're gonna we're gonna come back and talk to you later, maybe. Okay, cool. Now, let's go inside the bookstore. I want to investigate this northern part as well. Equip a flashlight in low light areas. We'll do. We haven't seen any yet. This must be mom. Let's just look around and touch a few things. Gift books and molten candy. Man from the Heimdall series. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Heimdall somewhere. Hey, uh, Storekeep, can you tell me about these uh, Muscle Man books? Oh, Man from Heimdall, a very popular series of adventure novels. She looks at the book with some disdain. They're awfully immoral and violent books. Why are they so popular? Blood and violence, scantily clad women, epic narratives, all these mystical things he encounters, they're bound to grab those with little imagination and nothing to do. Huh, well, I don't know if that's something I'd be interested in. Who at last, someone sensible. She fiddles with her pendant. However, I can still urge you to buy one. Can't judge a book by the cover, they say. If you're a novice of the series, I'd recommend Heimdallerman, the man from Heimdall. There's supposed to be good introduction to the series. Nine real, Jesus, frick. Uh, let's just look through the books. Rows and rows of Heim Dollarman blur your vision. You make out some titles, Man from Heimdall and Mammoth Riders. Man from Heimdall, Return to Heimdall. <laughs> and the solipsistic Man from Heimdall and the, is, I don't know if I'm saying this right. Maybe it's Helmdall, it's Helmdall. And the Helmdall man. Good God, how many are there? <sighs> Maybe a hundred? Man from Heimdall and the Sages of the End of the World. Man from he Helmdall and the False God. Man from Helmdall and the Scorched Earth. Man from Helmdall and the Helmdall Colonies. Man from Helmdall and the Swamp Beast. Man from the Helmdall and the Snow Crabs. I, I, okay, I got it. The display rack before he was burdened under piles of Man from Helmdall novels. Uh, do any of these books uh, call out to me? Of course not. Nothing of interest. Only silence in the cosmic background pain radiation. 
right? So maybe these are um, different genres in each of these sections. Old sports magazines tucked away in a corner. The book collects the national re recipes of Arda. They're all about lake trout. Yum. My favorite. My favorite fish. Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Plaisance. The clerk extends a greeting. Be welcome. And please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. We're going full bum. Uh, listen, before we go on, I know this is uh, forward, but you seem to be well off enough. Can you give me some money? I feel like there won't be an opportune moment to ask later. Sir, don't be ridiculous. Frick. I certainly will not give you money. I would be doing you a grave psychic disfavor. Psychic disfavor? One has to earn one's success, even if one is a police officer. Handouts are nothing but manipulation. All they do is make you dependent. Okay, Mom. Certainly there are good things to be said about dependents. Well, uh, you know, you, you're actually, you're right. What kind of business relationship would that kickstart? Exactly. In this kind of business relationship, I could come and critique your work anytime. I could demand things from you, limiting your creative freedom. Wouldn't want that. We wouldn't want that. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. So, uh, you must be the owner of this store, then. I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Voice is high-pitched, so this would give it more penetration. She has fine-tuned her voice to find the most welcoming approach for attracting new customers. It doesn't work. Hey, uh, that's your daughter outside the store, right? Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing the job like a proper girl? Oh, yeah, of course. She was great. Oh, wonderful. Did you talk to her? Yeah. Great. On a scale of 1 to 10, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? Oh, definitely a 10. She's certainly very polite and very helpful. Oh, my precious. Her dedication brings joy to my heart. She's immensely satisfied. Oh, she's immensely satisfied with the answer. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as Annette. Wow, she seems like uh, quite the trooper. She's a great value add to the business. As a young girl should be, with the proper attitude, she'll have a bright financial future. All right. The woman before you scans the store, her shoulders rigid and tense. Every now and then she nudges her glasses. Listen, uh, your daughter, she mentioned something about this place being cursed. Cursed? Who said that? Annette? She blinks. I will have a word with her. This place is not cursed. It has robustly magnetic energy. Good for commercial activity. My business is thriving, sir. What in God's name is she talking about? Pfft. I don't know. Magnetic energy? Fine, then. Uh, what if I wanted to buy a book? Well, then, why are you talking to me? Everything's on the shelves to browse. Don't you feel compelled to buy anything? She fiddles with her pendant, then waves her bony fingers directly at you. See those shelves there? Go, be drawn. All right, well, uh, what type of books do you have? Everything's on the shelves. Take a look yourself. Doesn't want to help. Not just her glasses. The shelves compel you, don't they? All right, I'll, I'll take a look. She smiles and nods, seemingly relieved. Farewell now, book peddler. Oh, wow, you work hard. Uh, yeah, I do? Oh, yes, you hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out there, but you keep it real and provide. <laughs> yeah, I, what hard work do I do exactly? Look at yourself. You're a human pedometer. You must have walked 200,000 steps down cracked asphalt, mosaic sand, and linoleum after you reemerged. That is a sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh and people are evil. You didn't make it that way, and you won't let it break you. You ride. Yeah, I fucking ride till I die, bitch. <laughs> That's just what it's like, life and death. But you got gills on your side, baby. Got those black papers with the faces of the innocences on them. You bring in the Franco Negroes and the Solas. It ain't easy, but you do it, day in and day out. You didn't make the rules, but you won't lose. You're a cop and a sprinter and a money printer. <laughs> uh... Well, I, oh, the, and then there's pawning stuff off to that suspicious Roy guy. Yeah, you're in the sales business, shaking for shit, and then pawn it off law officer style. Okay, maybe that's like a hint for how we can get some stuff. I guess I've made like some gills, but mostly from picking up bottles. 
sure, sure. And has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack or shoot yourself in the mouth? You, but you still hustle 24 seven, ride or die. Now ask yourself, are you rich? <laughs> uh, I can quintessentially say that I actually am not. That's right. You work harder than anyone. You almost rode yourself to the grave and you're still practically a hobo. Why is that? Well, uh, frick, I don't know. Why is it? Why am I so poor? Because of the taxes. G-Man's got his jam covered sticky fingers in your pocket, stealing from you every time you buy, sell, walk, talk, fart, so much as sneeze. Are taxes almost non-existent in the Gossamer State that is Revishal? I thought there were no taxes. Oh, you and I both, but they got those indirect modes of taxation. Sales tax, excise tax, extraction tax. This tax that doesn't even have a name. Plus, there's the stuff people in other countries pay for. That makes them tax for more money from you here. The Gossam Estate's a myth. In total, the coalition government has taken 98% of all your money. No fucking way. I guess I'm a free market fundamentalist now. Oh boy. Here you go, Asla. Fight the righteous fight. Free the people. Keep it real, keep it straight, keep foaming at the mouth furiously on the tax issue. What in the hell? Oh, advanced race theory is done. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Everything is calm in the eye of the race storm. Your mind is lucid and bright. The mind-bending phylogenetics appear more distant. And to be fair, a little ridiculous. The great race mystery is cleared up. And all that's left to do is verbalize your thoughts. Go and talk to Measurehead about your newly found insights. So we have extra conceptualization. The mystery is mostly aesthetic. Now, I'm guessing that this is going to help us uh, talk to the dude. There's also... Where is it here? We have this to boost our psyche. Is that something we want to consider? I guess when talking to him, maybe. I guess maybe. This is giving us conceptualization, which is actually up here already boosted. Maybe this comes into play, or maybe we wait for something that's a little bit more obvious in the psyche area, since conceptualization is coming from that uh, thought cabinet. But let's see what these are. Board games. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by whirl-related merchandise. Like we can just look through instead of asking her. An endless variety of source books, lore books, and codices litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welcome, Welkin Compendium, 2nd Edition. There's also a large hardbound tomb with intricate cover art. The Hunters of Kaduak, Boreal Creature Compendium, and a Pick Your Path adventure game game book titled Tales of Whirl, Cavern of Velcrog. Books in a board game section? Who wants to read books? Is there anything here that's like really catching my eye? There's a box that says Whirl, third edition mega setting supplements module. The side panel notes, a fantastic adventure board game, new maps and miniatures, a sticker on it displays 25 real. That price is steep, but it's a third edition mega setting supplement, so it makes sense. Jeez, all right. Let's check out the rest of the store. Might have some action there. Crime novels. These shelves are overburdened with novels from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. Whoops. Uh, crime fiction is a disgrace. An asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes of the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now. Would you like a list of the books found on the shelf? Oh, <laughs> I want to hear all the Dick Mullins. You see, Dick Mullen on the job, Get Me Mullen, The Stalwart Adventures of Richard P. Mullen, Dick Mullen and the Murder of the Orchard, The Sordid Affair of Dick Mullen, A Killing is Declared, Dick Mullen in the Murder House, The Final Case of Dick Mullen, an obvious lie, Dick Mullen in the Clock Tower, The Ordeals of Dick Mullen, Dauntless Dick, Dick Mullen's Funeral Pyre, and The Murder of Dick Mullen. Wait, Dick Mullen dies? 
Oh no, turns out he faked it to solve case. <laughs> Are there any more Dick Mullins? Yes, there's also the dame who did it. Farewell, my Mullen. Faking death seems to be a common trope in the Mullen series. The morbid tales of Dick Mullen and Dark Tide Turns. Tragedy calls for Dick Mullen, another one with fake death. And of course, Dick Mullen the murderer. In order to catch a murderer, Dick Mullen must become the murderer. After all of this, you still haven't found the answer to the one question that matters. Who is Dick Mullen? Yeah, who is Dick Mullen? Oh, God. Your attempt to grasp at the answer fails. It seems very close by, pulsating, just out of reach. Probably in one of the books. Hey, uh, Storekeep, what's all this crime fiction? Oh, crime, robberies, murders, she lowers her voice. Even sexual crimes. We're fortunate to have Dick Mullen and his stories to sort all that out. You're a police officer, apparently. You shouldn't buy all, or you should buy all these. They really do teach a person how to be a proper detective. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hungry for those sales. The tomb of fascist magic, rather candid. Everyone knows the most interesting thing about fascists was their magic. Quaint picture book brochure, very colorful, probably more my style. <gasps> Maps? Is that a map? Be a map. Map wall. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulind, a map of Revachal, and a map of Martinez. Let's look at the map of Revachal. The north coast of the Verdant Island is shattered by the delta of a river. It is the River Esperance. Countless bridges that put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. To the east, rolling hillsides, Le Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up into the megacity. They sound rich to you. This is Ravishal East. What about west of the river? Couron, somewhere to live, not bad. Then there's Jamrock, it's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Faubourg, it's almost as bad and much larger. Then Coal City, it's the worst. And Martinez, well, it's so small you can't even see it on the map. No, wait, there it is. North of Jamrock, the strip of coast next to the Greater Revachal Industrial Harbor. It looks downright despondent. It's almost Coal City, to be honest. No, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have, but it's still something. Streets and sodium lights, the sky, the world. You're still alive. Look at the map of Martinez specifically. It's not really a map, it's a tourist thing, a picture postcard with buildings on it drawn from an isometric perspective. Date in the upper right corner says 48, a couple years old. Still, it's detailed, could be pretty useful for scouting ahead. You see the jagged boxes of the industrial harbor, even the whirling and rags there. Cool. And the larger area of the Insulind. The large map displays archipelagos. You see a constellation of small dots in the light blue emptiness of the Insulindic Ocean. The largest in the northeast is Le Caillou. You're here. Uh, away, another far away in the southwest, Seminese Islands, Ile de Fantôme. And what else? Ozone, Laurentide, Face of la Mer, <laughs> Archipelagos, North Arcade Islands, all just specks of arcade on the vastness of the Insulindic. On the edges of the map, the color fades into a blur of dotted lines, black and white. Disintegrating into mathematics. In the northeast, a dust might dance on the north coast of Caillou. In a bookstore, it's you. Wait, uh, you can see cities on the islands? You can on Caillou, Revachal, a single black star on Ozone, Fond du Lair, and Vermando on Archipelagos. Croyant Moraine, Villiers on Seminine, Old Duvai. And on Laurentide, Diora of the Seven Seas. 850 million people live on these little dots. An oceanic world of culture and commerce torn apart by history. Let's look at the edges. The ocean, the ocean breaks apart into a tangle of cosines and azimuths, all pointing into pale nothingness. Mundi is the north azimuth. Grad is the northeast azimuth. Samara is the east azimuth. Seol is the west. And Isolus... Or sorry. Uh, Seol is the west azimuth. Isolus, they're called. Connections to other world, worlds past the Insulindian. Unknown to you, you only know you've never been there before. You have little idea what they are. Oh, we failed this check. Distant stars, gods, but looking at them makes you feel almost non-existent. 
Whatever they are, the Azolas are immeasurably large compared to you and very, very far away. Hey, uh, Storky, can I buy these maps? I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale. And besides, you could scarcely afford them. They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. Why, why is the map of Martinez so cheap? That old thing? It's an out-of-date map but a, of a tourist location that never was nor came to be. From when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago. They also renovated the horse statue. It's those guys, okay. Set up those coin-operated viewers and designed the new street lamps. The place does not look like a successful tourist trap, does it? Well, what happened then? Oh, they didn't get far for some reason. The shame the project never got going. It would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. <laughs> uh, what if we try to steal it? 28%. Oh, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let's put on our... Are these our interfacing gloves? Oh, these are our... Inter That's our best chance that we got. All right. Well... Slowly, you move your hand towards the map attached to the board. Before you can reach it, you're interrupted. Lieutenant costs sharply and whispers, uh, Perhaps not. It's against RCM policy to defraud small business owners. <laughs> All right, well, I, I want to buy the map of Martinez. She nods. Always good to be informed of your surroundings. Yeah, now we're talking. Okay. So, we've got a map. A worn and torn map of the Martinez area dating from 48. A title on the top reads... Bienvenue à Revachol. It's a bit out of date, as it was originally created by a design studio in a failed attempt to spruce up Martinez and turn it into a fancy tourist location. The worn map features the patchwork grid of the streets of Martinez, with directions to approximate or to appropriately touristy locations. Year 48 resides in the upper right corner. Let's just uh, trace a path through the grid here. Oh, your fingers move through the various streets across Rue de saint Guilain and Rue de saint Dispa, over saint Brune and Martinez North. Finally coming to a halt on the spot where you are currently standing, although the map gives no such indication itself. For more detailed view of the map, go to your journal in the map tab. Okay. Oh, finally. Okay. I don't know if this, like, really matters. Um... Mirror? Martinez Waterfront, Fisherman... Okay, so this is that broken thing here. I don't know why this says mirror... Oh. Oh, I see. Okay, this is referencing to whatever is highlighted. Oh, cool. Yeah, this is actually pretty nice. So, in theory, on Wednesday, we'll get access to this area. Uh, the fishermen's shacks and these, this church, perhaps. Um, there's a couple of these things that we could go and try. Like, we could try to uh, hurt him. That's actually the only white check that we have available. All right, cool. Let's just finish up checking the other shelves. Biographies. The plaque on the shelf reads, Biographies of Famous People. You see a large variety of names, none of which ring a bell. Browsing through all the books with their names makes your head spin. None of these seem important or relevant. It's all just vapid egoism. Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High Speed Love, The Tragic Love Story of Jacob Ur and Alfie Delatraz by one Cecilia Averbrook. What's it about? High Speed Love chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tourney racers in history. One of them is the madcap driver Jacob Ur. His blonde mane graces the cover. Next to Ur's life story, you see a slim biography of an occidental rock star called the Anti-Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine into the other. That's got to be like an Ozzy Osbourne reference. Next to that, Revisholian radio personality Guillaume Bevy stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real-life crime and ruining cops' days. I really must insist you buy one of the books. You interrupted by the shopkeep. Reading them is not free. Do still browse, though, but not too long. She understands she has erred against the customer and immediately corrects course. Oh, I I'm sorry, I, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead, take your time. Time is commerce. All right. Got one on the floor. Another boring book just discarded here. 
shelf of paranormal books. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Hey, y'all, uh, what are these books here? Um, please, sir, no browsing in that shelf. That wisdom is not for free. I can't have you end up, like, opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. Oh, no. What the? I miss the various books you find. One's written by name, Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, and balance. These three things are very important to the working class mind. The point of the book and many others on the shelf is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. So like naturopathy. Uh-huh, that's, uh, that's interesting. Various paranatural books still live to the shelf. Okay. We're going to go and check this back area of the store and see what's happening there. And then we're going to, I guess, head back. Um, I don't know if that back section of the Whirling and Regs will have been opened by now, but we can definitely go talk to the guy. Um, what's his name again? Find out who's in the union box. Yeah, so this here. Oh, they're not there today. Okay, so they won't be there. I thought this might happen uh, later on. What's the race at Igma? So we have to return to Measurehead and uh, explain our thoughts on that. So should be fun. Only warm primordial blackness. Your conscious for men sinny. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never, ever.